We grow more dependent on outer space every single day, and major corporations are investing big time. In 2016, the global space economy was valued at $329 billion, according to the Space Foundation. In 2020, its value grew to nearly half a trillion dollars to $447 billion. Today, Morgan Stanley's space team estimates that the global space industry could surge to over $1 trillion by 2040. The Space Foundation says there were a record of 145 orbital launch attempts from eight nations in 2021, with commercial missions increasing at a faster clip than military and government missions. Some of these launches carried 14 history-making private citizens who flew to space on commercial vehicles, those from Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, and SpaceX. The activity reflects the growing size of the global space economy, which reached $423.8 billion in 2021, according to the Space Report. In the fourth quarter alone, there were 61 private equity and venture equity financings totaling more than $3.2 billion. There are a total of 90 nations operating in space today and commercial space revenue heavily outweighs government spending. And there have been more launch attempts than ever before. The global space economy is growing. But why? Our hyperconnected world depends on it. The United States, and particularly its intelligence services, worry about an attack on the United States that is not nuclear weapons, that is not chemicals, that is not uh, biological, but is technological. Global communications are embedded in our daily lives. Miles above our heads, beyond our awareness, satellites manage our hyperconnected society. If you look at space, lots of times you think about the Hubble telescope or, you know, Mars probes, but most people don't realize that they use space every day. Open your cell phone to make a call. When you take money out of the bank with your ATM card, satellite bring you your TV shows and live news from around the world. You use them each time you rely on a positioning system for air, for sea, for land traffic control, and even in your own car. There would be no weather forecasting, disaster monitoring without satellites. Our entire life depends on satellites. They're essential, but we're not conscious of that until we lose it. Today, at least 1,000 active satellites circle the Earth. Forty-five nations own these satellites, and most of the world uses their signals. But the United States dominates as the owner and user of space systems, both civilian and military. Bombs on target, real-time battle management. That's what we're about, and that's what we are able to uh, deliver through space, air, land, and sea, and the, uh, the capability of all of those to come together. Uh, we started that in Desert Storm. We've done that in each conflict uh, since and we get better and better and better. But there's a problem with this idea. Space debris. NASA describes the problem like this. Low Earth orbit is an orbital space junkyard. There are millions of pieces of space junk flying in low Earth orbit. Most orbital debris comprises human-generated objects, such as pieces of spacecraft, Tiny flecks of paint from a spacecraft, parts of rockets, satellites that are no longer working, or explosions of objects in orbit flying around in space at high speeds. Most space junk is moving very fast and can reach speeds of 18,000 miles per hour, almost seven times faster than a bullet. 
Due to the rate of speed and volume of debris in low Earth orbit, current and future space-based services, explorations, and operations pose a safety risk to people and property in space and on Earth. There are no international space laws to clean up space debris in low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit is now viewed as the world's largest garbage dump, and it's expensive to remove space debris from low Earth orbit because the problem of space junk is huge. There are close to 6,000 tons of materials in low Earth orbit. This problem is also known as the Kessler syndrome. NASA also talks about this. Space rockets, satellites, and other space trash have accumulated in orbit, increasing the likelihood of collision with other debris. Unfortunately, collisions create more debris, creating a runaway chain reaction of collisions and more debris known as the Kessler Syndrome, after the man who first proposed the issue, Donald Kessler. It is known as collisional cascading. I'm Don Kessler. I'm the former senior scientist for orbital debris research at NASA. Space is a natural resource like no other. The area we use has become polluted with objects by the debris generated when they collide. What's alarming is that the problem will get worse, even if we stop adding stuff. This happens as a result of collisional cascading. Objects collide at very high velocities, creating a large number of fragments that go on to collide with other objects, creating even more fragments, which then collide with more objects and on and on. This phenomena is sometimes referred to as the Kessler Syndrome. At the beginning of the space program, there was a general attitude that space was a big sky, that you could put anything in it that you wanted and not fill it up. The problem that you quickly run into is because these things are traveling so fast, they run into each other. And as soon as they run into each other, they create a lot of debris. And the rate of collisions will then increase. And as the collisions increase, you make more debris. And those fragments go collide with other things, and you start really making it more difficult and more expensive to operate in space. After convincing NASA that this was an issue, we launched a program of investigating the problems of space junk, with the primary goal of researching and developing solutions to keep space a reusable resource. One of my first jobs was to define the natural space environment. And what gave me an advantage over other people in looking at the orbital debris environment is I use those same models that we use to, to understand the natural environment and apply them for the first time to the satellite environment. Part of what I did was borrow some from kinetic energy equations and the thermodynamic equations of molecules in a box bouncing around. And uh, even though we've got much more sophisticated models today, they all come up with the same answer. The orbital debris problem is a classic tragedy of the commons problem but on a global scale. If we don't change the way we operate in space, all this results in an exponentially increasing amount of debris until all objects are reduced to a cloud of orbiting fragments that are capable of destroying any spacecraft that attempts to operate anywhere within that cloud. So here we have a contradiction. The global space economy and our dependence on space is growing at phenomenal rates. At the same time, the risk of being trapped on Earth due to space debris grows along with it. As we rely on outer space for our modern way of life, we also run the risk of destroying it. That's okay though. Let me explain. Everything in life in the universe holds a contradiction. It just becomes a matter of identifying the contradiction and figuring out a way to resolve that contradiction. In this particular case, the problem doesn't fall on all human beings. There is a very tiny group of people who are held responsible for pushing this contradiction towards a devastating result. Just like on Earth, we live in a ridiculously divided society. In 2017, Oxfam reported that the eight richest men own as much wealth as the bottom half of the entire world. Today, those numbers seem much worse. Back in the 2017 report, the richest man on Earth was Bill Gates with $75 billion. But in 2020, the richest man on Earth was Elon Musk with $304 billion. 
And it's not a coincidence that the richest man on earth today, Elon Musk, is a top investor in the global space economy. If we are to resolve the problems with outer space, we must also resolve the problems we have here on earth.